first time in history, all four belts in the cruiserweight division will belong proudly around the waist of one man. Huge amounts of pressure, you know, we've seen over the last probably year and a half, Dillian's been riding on the waves a little bit of AJ, boxing on the massive shows, but tonight was his breakout night against former world champion, undefeated, and um, also headline at the O2. It was a brilliant crowd, great card, live on Sky Sports, live on HBO across America, and it couldn't have gone more perfectly. Questions for the champion, please? Uh, he's on the way to hospital. He was earlier. We believe he's, he's fine. It was just a precaution. Um, but obviously it was a very heavy knockout. Dillian, what kind of message do you think this sends out to Deontay Wilder and as it was shown on HBO? You know, um, I've been screaming and shouting and kicking up dust for a long time now. I, I just show people what I'm capable of. You know, a lot of people underestimate me as a fight. A lot of people underestimate me as a world class. We're going to see who's going to be underestimate me now and saying all these things. You know, I showed up, you know, and I did what I had to do, man. You know, I um, boxed well and closed the show in style. You know, they love it at the old too. You know, it's like a beer pit. They love him, um, you know. But hopefully, Luke Brown is healthy and he's well. I heard he's well, you know. Um, I'll check in on him later on. Hopefully, he's good. You just took out a former WBA regular champion in style, 25 fights undefeated. What What do you feel right now? I f you know what? I feel well, I've always because I've always believed I was that level. And I've always believed I just had to just be patient and wait. And it's a perfect time, you know what I mean? It's been a hard road. Being patient, fighting on undercards, traveling to America, fighting, doing all the comeback fights after the defeat and working at you know, my injuries and stuff. But my left hook is back, as you can see, you know, I had major shoulder surgery and stuff. And, you know, I just feel good. I have enough confidence in my left hook now that when it lands, you know, as you see, as it lands, I just turn around and walk away because I'm a massive left hooker. And, you know, I'm just grateful for it to be back and forth. The most complete performance thing, and you did everything. Yeah, you know, so I'm, I'm one of those guys, when, when the answers are against me, I perform well, you know what I mean? I always, you know, um, like even in age, if I lost, but I still perform well with injuries, being in terrible shape, I still believe I perform decently, you know what I mean? The fight points, the fight was out jabbing him, and I was like, I beat him to the punch and stuff like that, but so, you know, I'm more mature now, I'm more controlled, more level-headed, you know, um, and I'm, I'm got and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, ah, oh, well, before four, Joshua was a six round punch and I'm thinking if I don't land my punches in the first six round, I'm in trouble. I've never been 12 rounds before, I used to worry about the 12 round dis distance and stuff. But now, I can go out there, be confident, I've got the fitness, the condition, the mental approach to go out there and just box and know that a knockout can come in the first round, the second round, the fifth, six, eleven, twelve. So what did you do differently for the preparation for this game? I just completely threw away everything I thought I knew about conditioning and training and just reinvented myself and listened to, listened to my team, listened to my promoter, my, the people around me and stuff, you know, and, um, the last fight, Eddie was like, oh, you did too much conditioning, blah, 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 this and the other. I, I, I did listen to him a little bit. I was like, yeah, maybe I'm doing a bit too much. I need to change certain things up. We went to Loughborough, I sat down, I spoke to him and like, listen, for this fight, we're going to work on your legs more. We're going to do more of this, we're going to do more of that. And, and it paid off. I felt strong in there, my legs felt good. Every time Lucas Brown thought he was going to con me and was trying to do his little fancy footwork, I was able to step out of range and count him and get punches off quick in the middle of what he was doing. So, you know, I've got a great team. Were you surprised how much um, punishment he took? No, no, I wasn't surprised. He's a big, tough guy. He's, you know, I keep fighting giants. I want to fight his giants. He's a massive guy. Massive head, massive bone structure. And, and he, he, he outweighed me by a stone. You know what I mean? So, I knew it was going to be tough. But it's only a matter of time. You know, and, and I know I don't need to go out there and land a big one straight where I can. Let my coach always say, chip him down, break him down, rock and roll, and just keep picking punches. And I know once I find his body, once I did to find his body, you know, I'm a vicious body punch, once I find his body, I know that I would have broke him down mentally as well. Because a few times I, I, I saw a car him and he was like, oh, he went, oh, that's not that. And then when I finally got it good, he was like, mm. and I thought, oh, there you go. You, you were so many times clean though, did you? Do you think there might be a moment when you might stick around for the whole No, 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 no. I knew, I, I went out, I was trying to put it my way a few times. A few times I had him out and I thought, you know what, big puncher, take your time, keep chipping away. I'm heavy handed. People might think I'm the biggest puncher in the division, I don't care. I'm heavy handed, so I was going to take my time and be patient, you know what I mean? I've got a very knowledgeable team around me, 
you know, and I, and I listen to them and I believe in the, the instruction that they give me. And I just forgot, don't go out and look for the knockout, you know. And I, I was very patient, you know, I was picking him in the middle of his punches before you get off and after you get off. So, you know, I knew it was only a matter of time. We knew the whole camp is dangerous, be smart, get behind your jab. And then what I did was I, I tricked him as well. The point of the fact was only jabbing, I was only jabbing. I sneak a left hook right hand in there, right hand, straight right hand. When he went to throw a big right hand, I went in the middle. So it was about tricking him because he's an experienced guy, he's an old campaigner. You know, a lot of old campaigners can trick the younger fighters into a certain, lead them into a trap. Oh yeah, you know, do a bit of this, do a bit of that. I know what he wanted was a big punch. I just knew how to be shot, boxing, and take the take opportunity to come. I knew it was only a matter of time because Early in the fight, I was hitting with the left foot, but they're just a little bit too high, or just a little bit too low. And then once, I, once I, I see, okay, his chin goes there every time, bang. In a perfect world, if you had your choice, who would you prefer to fight, Joshua or Wilder? This is business. You know, we want to fight the Wilder because I'll, I'll fight the Wilder, beat him. I go in as a WBC champion. AJ go in as WBA, IBF, and whatever else champion. It should be the, the biggest British, the first time two British heavyweight has contended for, the, for, 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 for a heavyweight title. That would be massive. But if the opportunity come up where I get to fight Joshua, I'll take it. If I come up to fight the end of the world, I'll take it. You know, I, I don't mind it. You know, you all have to make business sense to me and I'm, well, I'm pushing my career upwards. So whichever one, um, this, this man I'm sure in the next few days is going to um, come to me and say, listen, we have this, we have that, but we want the end of the world to fight. But sometimes we don't get what we want in life. Who's a harder fighter? Who's a harder fighter out of the two than Joshua Wilder? Well, they're my competition, so it's hard for me to, you know, they're both good fighters. It's hard for me to say, oh, this guy's harder than that. You know, I mean, they're, they're, I'm hunting both of them zero. But, you know, I want to say AJ because obviously AJ's boxing is more together than the Inter Wilder is. But the Inter Wilder seemed to be a serious puncher, but he's got no respect for boxing skills and boxing technique. You know, so there's lots of room and loophole to our boxing and to knock him out as well, as you can see. You know, um, he, when he gets in trouble, he's, he's in real trouble, so... But they both can punch, they both haven't got the greatest of chin, and they both can be, you know. But Joshua is a bit more to give than what the end of the world is. What's happened to your right hand? Is that just from the amount of punches hitting that big head of his, or...? <laughs> no, you know, it's just, it just one of those things where sometimes, you know, you know, you... I'm, it, um, it's so much of the stones was in there. Mm. I weighed 18, he weighed... A, yeah, there's a lot of weight, they've got 500 pounds in there, you know what I mean? And I'm throwing force and he's coming onto it, so you know, like I said, you can't swim it up and get in wet, so I just got a little wet, that's all. Do you, in terms of the knockout, where does that place and finishes, would you say? Say again? Where would you say that knockout punch and that finish breaks? I don't know, I, I, I'll let you guys decide. You guys um, are the media, you guys are the, the experts, I'll let you guys um, rate it amongst, you know. I haven't seen it yet. I'll watch it back. I'll let you guys, um, you know, I'm sure in the papers tomorrow or whatever you guys will put it wherever you guys, um, you know, you guys think it, it, it ranks in the, but, you know, I'm heavy handed, I can punch. I know I'm, 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 I'm getting it together <coughs> properly, finally. Mark, how did you assess the performance? Yeah, it was a, it went exactly to plan. Uh, the fight went exactly to playing round by round, you know. There's a couple of little things we tweaked along the way, and he'd done it to the T. And um, I was over the moon with, with the performance and, and the outstanding finish. It was uh, world class, and there's still 30% to come from Dillian White. You yeah. seem to know exactly when to tell him after that fifth round when to tell him to pick it up, because he came out. He'd been controlled the whole time, then all of a sudden came up purposeful that he wanted to yeah, get out of there. Yeah, uh, what, what happened was, uh, I think the fifth round, I think the fifth round, I said, get out there, faint, just chuck a little fainting kid in here and there, but don't overdo it. Then, still keep, still keep the work rate up. And then, uh, in the sixth round, we said, uh, go out there, double them up, treble them up, no more than that. Put a few together, here and there, you know what I mean? And he did just that behind the jab always. Perfect. Did but you he, feel did you feel Dillian that he he was ready to go at that point? Did I feel that Luke yeah, was, was ready, ready to go? Yeah, he was ready to go. Well we tested him a couple of rounds before that. We tested him here and there. Dillian tested him here and there, stuck it on him, come away, stuck it on him, come away. We had to break him down slowly but surely. Big man, dangerous man. Big big right hand, you know what I mean? So that's what we did, yeah.
Pillion, how, how did that cut affect him? Could you see how it, it was affecting his own sort of way he was approaching the fight? Well, he gets cut in every fight, so for him, cuts is nothing. You know, every single fight he has, he gets cut and he fights on and he gets through the fight. In the Chagia fight, he was bleeding the same way, but it's still not Chagia fight, you know. So it's one of those things where we knew he get cut, so we knew one of the key was to keep jabbing him. And when I see he got cut, sometimes when I see blood, I want to do shirt, but I, I maintain my patience, use my jab, get my jab going, and took my time, and going for the kill at the right time, you know. Eddie, has uh, AJ said anything yet about he was, he was watching. Uh, I haven't spoke to him since, but AJ loves watching Dillian fight. He loves fighting. And like, like Dillian said in the interview, it's like they've just got this thing where, like, if you said to Anthony, Tell me, obviously he's got a huge fight on Saturday, but tell me who you want to fight next. He's a million more. Every time. Which is mad, really, but it's just, they just, I don't know. And it's almost like, it used to be hatred, but it's still beef, but it is like, it's, they got each other's respect in that first fight, and they enjoyed it, both of them, and they want to do it again. But I just think it's such a fascinating landscape now, because, <coughs> I know people are talking about Joshua and Wilder and we worry about that after the Parker fight, but if he does fight Wilder next, he's not going to be till October, November, December. So, Dillian can box him in, in June, July, whenever. So that, that is, uh, you, you'd like well, he may have no choice. I mean, Maurizio Suleiman orders the mandatory. I mean, he's boxed to burn, which was an outstanding mandatory. So, at some point in 2018, the WBC are going to call the mandatory. So, but we were offered him three million dollars plus uh, US TV. It's around four million dollars. I reckon he made he might have made two point five against Ortiz. But this week's gonna be a lot of fun because Deontay Wilde is coming to Cardiff and Dillian White's going to Cardiff. And so is about eighty thousand people as well. But it's a brilliant time. I'm just pleased for Dillian because I think some people just presume that he's some lunatic from Brixton. <laughs> but what you don't see behind the scenes is the camp. You know, what he does with Mark, what he does in Loughborough, the time and money that he invests in himself and his preparation. And, you know, when you get an opportunity like that tonight here, and again, I said on HBO, and you could, you, you know, it could have been a poor fight and he, he sort of, he, that was his one chance. And it was a show real knockout. And they'll be playing that, well, they're already playing it all across America tonight. And they're playing his interview as well, which was priceless. So the sport is dominated by characters and people with talent, there you have both. And the heavyweight division is, you know, and also, by the way, there's a certain Tyson Fury. You know, I mean, I said to Barney Francis tonight at Sky, I said, can you imagine Tyson Fury against Dillian White? I mean, it's an absolutely blockbuster fight. So, he's in a great spot, he can go home happy and get back to work knowing that he has a huge future. And, uh, the opposite one was said in the past, when he spoke about Dillian, that he'd do it, there was the, Guarantee a fight to Joshua at the time you said that was out of the question. Is that something you might need? Is it? Yeah, Deontay Wilder's got no choice in the matter. Yeah, but the truth, the truth is, before tonight, there was only one person that the broadcasters wanted Wilder to fight, and that was Anthony Joshua. Now, there will be two people that the broadcasters wanted to fight, and now that's the Dillian White. So, you know, all, all Wilder's doing is waiting on Anthony Joshua. But he don't have to. He can still do that, but he can fight Dillian White in a career high payday. And if he's so confident about winning, if he did beat Dillian White, wow, the Joshua fight becomes you know, astronomical. But I just, I just think Wilder against Dillian here is just a monster. He might also be keen to stay at home. Who's that? Deontay Wilder. Yeah, but he can't have the money. But if you want to do that, we'll go to America. Yeah. No problem. It's not of mine now. We've already been to America and that was part of the plan. You know, go on the American side, box out there, see what it's like, in case the Joshua fight does come. So, you know, we've been strategically working together and doing things. So, listen, we're heavyweights. We want to win the road type. Whether it's in America, <laughs> Jamaica, Guyana, Portugal, Ireland, wherever it is, we'll go there. We'll go there. I've already spoke to Heyman's guys, text me straight away and said, uh, see what happens with Dylan, Wilder, Joshua. Also, there's Luis Ortiz if you want to fight him. You know, but really, we want a shot at the heavyweight <coughs> one title.
did it, and Andy Joshua put a picture on his Snapchat, he won 650 quid. He backed you to win. Oh, did it? <coughs> Yeah, I back him to win against Park as well in seven <laughs> round as well. So. Seven round? Yeah, yeah, I give him between six and seven round to, to beat Park because I think Parker's downfall is he's, he's an offensive front foot fighter and Joshua's going to love that. Parker's going to run the punches on that long and I think Joshua's going to splat him. So. We, listen, we both know the game, he knows the game, I know the game. He's leading the charge at the minute. i got respect for him, he's got respect for me, that's the main thing. And we both... We, it's a real rivalry between me and him, you know. Every good heavyweight had a rivalry. Holyfield, Lennox, Reddit Bowl, Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier. And it's good to have someone who is the genuine rivalry, but also respect as well, you know. And that's me anyway, unfortunately. Not unfortunately, but unfortunately, but still. Not too much respect in the build-up. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, once the fight signed, there's no respect. He just... But, but you know, listen, we're both, um, you know, young kids, both had rough growing up so we both respect each other okay you know we're turning our life around and we're doing stuff so you have to respect you, you can't help but respect a man that's doing that you know but when it's fight time you know like i was cool to lucas brown after but once the fight's on you know once the fight's on there's no respect you look forward to yeah i'm looking forward to it but you know i'm looking forward to it but you know i just I had my fair share of progression at the minute, so, so I'm going to chill out, you know, I might feel differently. I don't know if anyone's seen the, the playback of the celebration. It was one of the worst celebrations I've ever seen. You tried to kick the rope, well, which you missed. Since the man that tried it to have Benny and Benny Black yeah, team, right. Benny <laughs> went later. <laughs> <I'll do it. laughs> no, but no, 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 you know, you get pumped up and sometimes no, I was try, trying to calm you down, weren't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, you, you know, there's a lot riding at stake. You know, first, first, like, second time I'd land at the O2, I knew important was, you know, forget all the fights behind it's about I want to make O2 my own, you know what I mean? I want to have some good, great fights here, great that. nights and sell out, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of pressure on me, but I was calm and I was relaxing the whole build up. I wasn't as aggressive and as I was normally am, and, you know. But it, there was a lot of pressure on me, a lot, a lot of pressure, a lot of things in the pipeline depending on me looking good tonight. Well, thank you very much. In history, all four belts in the cruiserweight division will belong proudly around the waist of one man.